spot electricity here in this stadium, but there's going to be just as much at Three Rivers Stadium when the Expos come in next week. So, hey, come on out. We need to, we need to put the call out for the 10th men on the field. That's you and, and me and everybody. We need to turn out in force as the Bucks and the Expos battle for the National League Eastern Championship. That's right, Nelly, and the battle begins uh, one week from tonight, Monday, September the 24th, a big twinight doubleheader. It may not be on your original schedule. It's a makeup doubleheader a week from tonight. Single games on Tuesday, the 25th, and Wednesday, the 26th. The Bucks against the Ex Expos. Again, the dates. Twinite doubleheader a week from tonight, Monday, September the 24th, followed by single games on the 25th and 26th. No score in the ball game. We go to the second. Willie Stargell will lead off for the Pirates. Willie batting 353 this year against the Expos. Against the National League, Stargell's mark is 300. 28 home runs, including three against Montreal. First pitch from Rogers, ball one. Willie missed yesterday's game when he bothered by that bruised shoulder blade, suffered Saturday. Rogers, 1 0 pitch, swung on, golf through the right side by a diving Tony Perez, and Stargell is out with a leadoff single. Looked like it was a sinker ball down low to Stargell. But it was something off speed that Willie was just able to go really down after, able to get it on the meat of the bat and just drive it right on by Tony Perez into it, into right field for the base hit. Stargell on, leadoff single to the second, no score in the ball game, and left fielder John Milner hitting in the number five spot. Milner batting 289 as he steps in. 16 home runs, 55 runs batted in. Milner batting 353 this year against Montreal. Perez playing behind Stargell on the right side. Pitch swung on, bounced foul. Strike one. This copyrighted telecast authorized under television rights granted by the Pirates solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Pirates is prohibited. That is also true for our radio network stations along the line as well. Rogers appeared set, then stepped away from the rubber, and Miller steps out of the batter's box. Steve Rogers, one strike pitch to Milner. It's down low, and it's one and one. Joe Lynette coaching at third for the Pirates. Al Monchak coaching at first. Top of the second, no score in the ballgame. And the one-one pitch. Off speed, up high for a strike, one and two. Mr. Milner didn't think it was a strike. I gotta admit, I was a little surprised. I thought the pitch was up high. Doug Harvey, the umpire, veteran umpire behind the plate, notorious for having a small strike zone, and that strike also surprised me. One, two pitch. Up high, two and two. Do you find that, that certain umpires are better ball strike umpires and some are better base umpires? Well, that, that's basically true, and, and the good thing about Doug Harvey behind the plate, even though his strike zone is relatively small. He's very consistent in calling the same pitches in the same place time after time. Stargell at first, 2-2 two -two pitch. Line to right field, gonna drop in, base hit. Valentine will play it on one hop, flip it in. Stargell moves up to second base, and Milner's on at first. So leadoff back-to-back -back singles by Stargell and Milner against Steve Rogers. No score in the ball game, but the Buckos are setting up shop here early in the ball game. Well, we got a moment here. We want to give our network stations a chance to step in and identify themselves, so let's pause for station identification on the Pittsburgh Pirates Baseball Network. Bill Madlock hitting in the number six spot. Batting 281 on the year. Bunch at third base side. Paris charging, gloving, throwing off balance to Perez, and he got him. That lock is out, but the runners move up. Sacrifice going five to three. And Stargell moves to third. Milner to second. So the Bucks with a couple of runners in scoring position. Good bunt by Madlock. An excellent bunt. The purpose of the bunt being to make the third baseman feel the ball. If the pitcher is able to break off the mound, cover the line, they can still get our runner at third. And we were able to see Perry's charging the ball and firing to a speedy Madlock, who almost beat out the play, by the way. Ed Ott steps in. Infield up. 
Ott will step in with a 276 batting average, seven home runs, 46 runs batted in. Well, sure like to go out in front early in this ballgame. We've been playing a lot of catch-up baseball lately. I think yesterday that's what we ran into with the Mets. We just fell behind one too many times against New York, and it's tough to play catch-up day after day. And in that, that role, it's hard to be patient. You want to go out there and drive those runs in because, you know, at this point in the season, every game is so important. And we were just a little impatient yesterday. Swing at the first and second pitches off a non-control pitcher. There's a strike. Ed Ott had a notion, but it was in the strike zone, and it's one and one. Stargell Milner led off the inning with singles, then moved up on the sacrifice bunt by Bill Madlock. Ed Ott has one of his seven home runs this year off Steve Rogers. Batting with runners at second and third, one out. Ott swings and fouls it back. Ott in the number seven spot of the batting order, doing the catching against the right-hander Rogers, as Tanner has done all year long, platooning Ott and Nikosha. Runners lead off second and third. One-two pitch. That's up high, and it's two and two. Rogers has changed his pattern on Ed Ott primarily because he's noticed that both Stargell and Milner were sitting on the off-speed stuff that he tried to establish early on. And so with another left-handed hitter hitting behind John Milner, he has now gone to his hard stuff, trying to keep Ed Ott more honest. Rogers is predominantly a sinker ball pitcher. He's got the good riding fastball as well. Ott is, in my mind, predominantly a low ball hitter. I don't think Ed Ott handles the, the hard stuff up high too much. Two and two on Ott. Runners at second and third, one away. Rogers came set, then stepped off the rubber. He wants Carter to go through the signs again. No score, top of the second. Pitch is swung on and fouled off. Carter could not hold on, so the count remains at two and two. By the way, as we play the Expos in a big two-game series, you look at Stargell, he's at third. Willie let off the inning with a single. Milner at second base. John delivered with a single to right. Big series tonight as well between the California Angels and the Kansas City Royals in Kansas City. No score in the ball game. Pirates have runners at second and third and one out. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Up high. They appealed to third base umpire Eric Gregg, but he said no, he didn't go after it. So now it's three and two with first base open and one away. Rogers pitched against the Pirates on opening day. It was a no decision for him. Now he's ready. The right hander's three two pitch. Ott swings and taps it foul. An important hitter for Rogers to get out in Ed Ott. If he's able to get Ott, then he can pitch around Garner and have the pitcher coming up with a chance with two out to get out of the inning. That's if he gets the pitcher out. So he has to really concentrate on Ed Ott. Even though he's a left-handed hitter, he still wants to challenge him. Ott turned back to the home plate umpire. Doug Harvey asked him if maybe he went after ball four. Pitch appeared to be on the outside corner. Three and two on Ott. Stargell at third. Milner at second. One away. No score. Second inning. Payoff pitch. Swung on and popped into shallow left center field. Rodney Scott, the shortstop, is out. Scott makes the grab two away. Stargell will have to hold at third. And, of course, Milner will stay put at second base. Ox pop fly into shallow left center field, handled by the shortstop, Scott. That'll bring up Bill Garner. Time is called. Their uh, pitching coach, Jim Brewer. Brewer out to talk with Rogers. Carter eavesdropping as well. They have to be talking, Lanny, about the situation we just mentioned. They know that, that uh, the pitcher is hitting behind Garner, and they want to know exactly what they want to do. Does Williams want to walk him? Just go ahead and walk him. We're trying and pitch around Garner, make a perfect pitch or just miss with a pitcher hitting behind him, and they want to know what Roger wants to do. They, they've got to have this communication, even though it's early in the game, 
this might mean the game. So they've got that going. You were exactly right, Nellie Bryles, because they're going to put Bill Garner on. Dick Williams, the manager of the Expos, and uh, Jim Brewer, Steve Rogers, they've decided to put Garner on. Load the bases and pitch to Don Robinson. No score in the ball game. Top of the second. Robinson, one of our better hitting pitchers. He'll step in with the bases loaded. Counting tonight's game, the Pirates have 16 games left. Eight at home, eight on the road. Counting tonight's game, Montreal has 18 games left. Five at home, 13 on the road. Don Robinson steps in, 186 batting average. Bases are loaded in two away, top of the second, no score in the ballgame. Outfield, playing Don Robinson around to the right side. Right fielder Valentine shallowed up, center fielder Dawson towards right center. Don Robinson swings and fouls it off, strike one. Started to let off the inning with a single, he's at third. Milno followed with a single, he's at second. And Garner was intentionally walked. And the Pirate Runners surround Rogers. Bases loaded, two down. One ball and one strike on Don Robinson. Pitches down low. Rogers also the type of pitcher that you'd like to get to him early in the game. He gets stronger as the ball game goes. He establishes his pitching rhythm and really gets locked into his pitching pattern. So now is a good opportunity if we're able to take advantage. Oh, yes. The old, if you're going to get him, get him early trick. Just get him. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Strike in the outside corner, 1-2. and two. Bases loaded with two down. No score in the ballgame. 1-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled back out of play. Rodgers is 4-3 and three since the All-Star break. And a pretty impressive mark this year at home. He's won 11 of his 13 games right here at Olympic Stadium. Steve Rodgers facing his mound opponent Don Robinson. Bases loaded, two outs. 1-2 pitch. Bouncer, left side of the mound, shortstop, Scott has it, fires on to Perez, Robinson is out. Pirates are retired in the second inning. No runs, two hits, an intentional walk to Stargell. After an inning and a half from Montreal in game one of the series, Pirates nothing, and the Expos nothing. It's a long drive, going, going foul. If your transmission's gone foul after a long drive, see your local Amco dealer. No score in the ball game, last half of the second. So on Sunday, Lanny, which is the last game of the year, that's September 30th, the Pirates will take on the Cubs in the Pirates' 33rd annual prize day game. That's right, Nelly, and over 1,000 fans will win over $45,000 worth of merchandise, including a $15,000 customized Pirate van. And all fans attending that final regular season game will go away a winner with a pirate key tag, courtesy of Hamill Quinlan Realtors. So that's prize day, September 30th versus Dave Kingman and the Chicago Cubs. Buy your tickets now or register without obligation at any pirate ticket outlet. That might be when it's all on the line. Mm -hmm. well, Good series to see. Our final weekend, we're home against the Cubs. Montreal, final weekend, they're home against the Philadelphia Phillies. Gary Carter hitting in the number five spot for the Expos. He'll lead off the second in a scoreless ball game. Carter, 275 on the year, 21 home runs, 69 runs batted in. Good looking catcher. Wide open stance, the pitch to Carter, breaking pitch down a low ball one. Talking today with Don Robinson about the hitters, you know, he said, well, basically, with the exception of the left-handers, you can throw them all in the hat and pull out a name, and I'm going to pitch them the same. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they'll throw a lot of right-handers at you. Said every one of them liked the ball out over the plate. They like to extend their arms and try and hit you off the end of the world. So he mm -hmm. said, I have to saw that bat off and keep the ball down. 
Here's the 2 0 -oh pitch. It's a strike two and one. So many times you talk to people about pitching to hitters, you hear them say, hard stuff in, breaking pitches away. I mean, that's basic right there. That's pitching by the book. High and tight, low and away. 2 1 pitch. Swing and a miss, 2 and 2. Look at Dandy right there. It's a good curveball. And I, I'll tell you, I'm really impressed by, by Don Robinson. He's been able to throw that real good curveball when he's been behind and get the hitters that are looking for that fastball way out in front. But you have to admire him for wanting that ball tonight. He hasn't had that good of a year with physical problems, and it would have been easy for him not to be ready tonight. But he wanted the ball, and for Don Robinson, tonight could start the season for him. That's right. Could be a brand new start. Here's the 2 2 pitch to Carter. Low and away, 3 and 2. Carter leading off the second scoreless ball game. Don Robinson, 22 years of age. Here's the payoff pitch. Followed back out of play. Montreal Expos, they've won eight of their last 10, 18 of their last 21. Still have so many double headers left. That'll be one of the things to look for in the final weeks of the season. Payoff pitch to Carter. Swung on. Bouncer outside a third. It's a foul ball. Talked about it at the top of the broadcast about what Montreal's got left. They've got back-to-back -back double headers with the New York Mets Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And they just finished back-to-back -back double headers with the Cardinals Saturday and Sunday. And they split both of the twin bills. A couple of 11 inning ball games against the Cardinals. Carter swings on a 3-2 pitch and pops it foul. First base side on a play. Then Lenny, as, as we have a makeup game on an open date on our schedule, the 27th, on which we're to play the St. Louis Cardinals, provided nothing else happens between now and then. The Expos travel to Atlanta and play them a doubleheader on an open date. So they, they've got the games ba backed up and uh, it might prove pretty tough on their pitching staff. Mm -hmm. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Carter. Swung on and popped up. That's going to be back over the screen out of play. Talking with Dave Van Horn, their broadcaster, their Montreal broadcaster, he was saying that many people who see the Expos or talk about the Expos underrate the Montreal pitching staff. Say well, that... Uh, there's doubtful whether they really have the depth they need. And uh, so far this year, they've gotten the depth. Well, the reason that they can say that is, is basically hindsight. They could not count on the young guys, basically, that have come through for them the second half of the season. The veterans have done well. There's no doubt about that. 3-2 pitch. Carter pops it up. Ed Ott coming out. About halfway to the mound. Ott makes the grab. Carter is out. And it looked like he got him with the off-speed pitch. One away. No score in the ball game. And before the game, we talked with Pirate manager Chuck Tanner. Asked him how crucial this series is. Well, it's not a crucial series. It's a series you'd like to win, but we have to play four more at home, and we just have to win the rest of the way at either team. So this game, it'd be nice to win this game, and the next one here, if we win both, it's not over. If we lose both, it's not over. You know, Nelly, if you had taken the script, Chuck Tanner and Dick Williams almost said it word for word, didn't they? But I think when it comes about next Tuesday, provided everything stay even, that tune will definitely change, and you will hear a chorus of crucial the most important must. and it's all on the line uh -huh. must all of those cliches will suddenly come to the front pitch to valentine down low ball one no score in the ball game nobody on one out last of the second valentine as he faces robinson has a 277 batting average it's inside and two and oh the important thing is if you win now you might not have to worry about next week if you can pull three four or five games ahead i still maintain that if we grab a split here at least a split stay in a virtual tie with the Expos they got to be thinking about the fact that they play 13 of their last 16 games on the road and they have been a road club that is uh, 32 and 36 this year under 500. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Valentine. Swing and a miss. Pirates have two hits in the game got base hits from Stargell and Milner in the top of this inning. Expo base hit came in the first recorded by Dave Cash Robinson 2-1 pitch to Valentine 
fouled back and it's two and two. Montreal's Olympic Stadium 325 down the lines. 375 to the power alleys and 404 feet to straightaway center field. The line dimensions here at Montreal are the shortest in the National League, the 325 dimension. Pitch is swung on and fouled back. on one away Don Robinson with a 2 2 pitch to Valentine shot to center Moreno a couple of steps to his right and he has it two away Carter and Valentine retired first two outs Omar Moreno took care of the Valentine fly ball bring up third baseman Larry Parrish and boy what a year he's having Parrish 306 26 home runs 72 runs batted in this is what they were hoping Larry Parrish would do a couple of years ago when he first came up. But sometimes it takes a year or two under your belt and under the right circumstances you mature. And that he certainly has this year, driving in a lot of runs and getting a lot of clutch home runs for them, driving in uh, game winners. First pitch to Parrish is low and away, ball one. Nobody on with two down. Don Robinson, right-hander with a 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. One and one. Outstanding breaking ball by Don Robinson. And it looks like he's... He's uh, got that curveball down in the strike zone tonight, and if he has that pitch over the plate and moves that fastball in and out, he should be tough. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball down low. 2-1. and one. Don Robinson. A 326 lifetime ERA against the Expos. Paris swings a line shot into left center field. Base hit. Ball is going to be cut off at the 1-0. Ball bobbled by Moreno. Omar having trouble picking the ball up. Paris rounds second. And he'll stop there. Omar got to the ball right at the edge of the warning track, but could not find the handle. Don't know if it had a major effect on the play. It appeared as if Parrish was going for two anyways. Well, this is a breaking ball that Don Robinson just got over the plate. It was down, but it was out over the plate. Parrish went right with it, lined the ball into left center, and Omar having a little trouble picking up the handle, but got it in time to keep Parrish from advancing further. So it's a two-out double for Larry Parrish, and it brings up Rodney Scott. Of course, he started the year at second base. Cash was on the bench. Now Rodney Scott, the batter with a pitcher due up next. They're going to put Scott on. Pirates will intentionally walk Rodney Scott. Turnabout, fair play. They walk Garner to get to the pitcher, so we're going to do exactly the same thing. An interesting uh, part of, of uh, the Rodney Scott and Dave Cash saga here is the fact that Dave Cash replaced Scott at second base for offense. And then Scott it turns around and replaces Spire at short for exactly the same reason. Spire not just doing well after he was trying to come back from his injury, and they inserted Scott at short. By the way, it was because of, a, of an injury that Scott really had to come out of the lineup initially. And it gave Cash a chance to play. And Cash played so well. Spire didn't play so well. And so they, when Scott was healthy, they put Scott at shortstop and Cash stayed in the lineup. Allegedly, Rodney Scott was involved in a fracas with a security guard. That's how he originally got hit. Got hurt, rather. Parrish at second. Scott's at first. Two down. Steve Rogers, the batter. No score in the ball game. Last half of the second. Pirates and Expos battling here in Montreal. These clubs in a virtual tie in the National League Eastern Division. Bouncer up the middle, shortstop Foley near the second base bag, easily steps on second, force out on Scott, and the Expos are done in the second. Montreal, no runs, one hit, the double by Parrish, an intentional walk in the inning. So after two innings of play, Pirates nothing, and the Expos nothing. Good three. Down the air at 720, as it will be Bruce Keeson for the Bucks. Under our contractual arrangements with the Pirates for this telecast, the announcers for this game have been selected by station KDKE-TV, subject to the approval of the Pittsburgh Pirates Baseball Club. And you can root the Bucks home during this half of the third inning. If a home run is hit, our contestant Tom Mickley of Butler, Pennsylvania, will win $1,100 worth of Giant Eagle groceries. 
And let's see. Here in the third, the top of the batting order, Omar Moreno. Tim Foley and Dave Parker do up. Ball game scoreless as we go to the third. Good play by Parrish in the first inning. Got Moreno. Pirates no runs on two hits. Expos no runs on two hits. Steve Rogers delivers. And a strike on the inside corner. As we bring it to you from Montreal again, we'll remind you that uh, with our sidekick Milo Hamilton, uh, by doctor's orders, told to take a couple days off, we're broadcasting from Montreal for both the radio and TV sides as well. Pitch to Moreno is down low one and one. Omar batting 435 this year against the Expos as he started the game. And he's had six of his 69 stolen bases against Montreal. Swung out, a shot up the middle, base hit. Omar with a solid single to center. And he's aboard Omar, 69 stolen bases. He is two away from the mark that he set a year ago. Now Tim Foley will bat for our Giant Eagle contestant, Tom Mickelay of Butler, $1,100 in the jackpot. Tim Foley, you know, he looks a little bit like Y.A. Tittle. He's wearing the black high tops. Remember Y.A. Tittle with the Giants? He used to wear those high top spikes. That well, if he could wear them as a quarterback in football, he's the quarterback of the infield. Why can't he wear them That's in right. this situation? I hope he's not setting a trend. They aren't the prettiest thing. In no, the I was going to say, they're downright ugly. Moreno at first base, nobody out. Third inning, no score in the ball game. Rogers steps back off the rubber and turned his shoulder, but didn't unload the ball. Here's the stretch now by Rogers. Moreno out to a decent lead again. Rogers bluffs the throw, but doesn't unload it. Tim said, hey, they might be ugly, but he said it gets the job done. He has both ankles taped, but he said those high tops give him just the added support where he's not afraid to go in the hole and have to have to really pivot on that foot. Plus play at first. Rogers throw to try to nip Moreno, but Omar got back. Pretty good move by Steve Rogers. Certainly was. He's been working on Omar with a different deliveries and different speeds to first base, and this was his real good move. And if the throw had been right on the bag, he had a chance at Omar. Nobody out in the third. Scoreless ball game. Foley 0 for 1. Fly to right. First time up. Go to first. Omar back. Rogers thought he had him. That's what uh, Pete Falcone said after he beat the Bucks yesterday. That one of uh, the keys to his success against the Pirates in yesterday's game at Three Rivers was his ability to keep Moreno off the base. Omar's running. Pitch is a strike. Throw to second base is not in time. Throw was high. Omar gets his 70th stolen base of the year. Got a good jump off first base. Well, Omar was not going to be intimidated by all those throws, knowing that he could get back. Got that little bit of extra, took off the first pitch he got, and just flat beat a high Carter throw. Omar, 70 stolen bases. So one shy now of equaling his 1978 mark no balls and one strike on Foley Foley's job is to get him to third hit the ball behind the runner or bunt bunting it Rogers comes down off the hill he has it fires to Perez and Moreno moves to third so old high tops himself Foley got the sacrifice bunt down in perfect fashion got Moreno over to third one away no score in the ball game so we've got Moreno on the front door for Dave Parker Now, when uh, the Pirates had runners at second and third in the second with one out, they played their infield in. And they'll do so in this situation. Dave Parker batting for Tom Mickelay in our jackpot inning, $1,100 on the line. And if you think AstroTurf is fast when you're playing back, you should see how much quicker it gets when you're playing in. It's kind of cozy. Everybody in that Montreal infield about even with the bags. Runner at third, one out, pitch to Parker. It's up high, ball one. 
That's especially with Dave Parker or Willie Stargell hitting that can just launch the ball like a rocket. Might have to olay a ball that's hit a little extra hard. <laughs> Either hope that you get your glove on it or you get out of the way. Here's the stretch by Rogers, 1-0 pitch. Swung on, a shot through the right side, base hit, Moreno will score, and the Pirates take a one to nothing lead. Parker gets his 87th RBI of the year. Singling through the right side, Valentine flips it back in, so the Bucks, who like to set up the scoring with the stolen base, boy, that's called manufacturing a run right there. And Parker puts the Bucks in front one to nothing. Well, whether the infield was in or the infield was back, no one would have caught this ball. It was a bullet hit on the ground right between first and second into right field driving in Moreno and we still have something going Parker I'm sure has stolen base on his mind Dave with 20 on the year Stargell steps in he had a base hit in the second first pitch to him is outside ball one when we were here what was it late July they had a large crowd on hand in that ball game the Pirates jumped out in front early and really quieted down a, a 60,000 plus Montreal crowd whereas they're caught up in this expo fever and boy, I tell you, these two fine baseball clubs. Parker's running, pitch to Stargell, swing and a miss, strike, throw to second base, is not in time. Parker's stolen base, is 21st of the year. He's in scoring position. Second stolen base of the inning. Well, it certainly was, and Parker gets a good jump, all right. Heading towards second base, Carter makes an outstanding throw, but the key to the play was the fact that Rodney Scott took the throw in front of the bag, and allowed Parker to slide to the outside part of the bag for the stolen base. The ball would have beat him. Doug Harvey sees me indicating that uh, Carter was interfered with by Stargell on his backswing. Yeah, I think he's saying that Willie came around on his big swing and got a piece of Carter and interfered with his throw. Tanner, Stargell, Milner all there. I missed the play. I was watching Parker. I was watching Parker running towards second base, and Carter came out of the shoot with yeah. Willie in his wind-up, wind-up type swing. It appeared as though that uh, Willie hit him on the glove and interfered with his motion going towards second base. And on as Willie took the big swing, he kind of uh, was leaning in towards Carter a little bit. And I'm sure they're arguing that that's his natural swing, that he isn't doing anything differently. With that type of swing that he has with all the other swings and therefore did not deliberately try to interfere with the catcher. Yeah, Willie took the big swipe with Parker running. Dave's going to go back to first base. How do you raise ink on your scorecard when you have Parker down to second base on a stolen base? Well, don't take it off yet. We might get it yet. Maybe he'll bail us out. Well, that's the call. Parker back to first. Now Chuck's going to come out and get uh, further clarification from Doug Harvey. Tell you the way Chuck is reacting, he might uh, might protest this ball game. I'm just wondering about that. What's uh, what's in the rule books about that? Now Dick Williams is out of the Montreal dugout. What happened in that situation? Uh, Parker running on the pitch. Willie with that big swing of his. His bat came around. It did catch uh, Carter's glove. And so Doug Harvey has ruled that. And now Doug Harvey is on the is on the phone to the press box. Very often that indicates that a press box uh, that a protest is being filed. Apparently, Harvey is going to talk with his uh, crewmates, Andy Olson, Frank Pulley, and uh, Eric Gregg. What well, with the importance of this game, they want to make sure that they have the rule exactly right, and they're going over the play and ask how each of the different umpires saw the play in their own mind. They don't want to make a mistake, and they know the importance of the game. Also, they'll make uh, note of the situation. 
All right, so Stargell is in the batter's box with a count of one and one. Parker's at first, one away. Top of the third, Pirates leading one to nothing. Moreno started the inning with a single, swiped to base, moved to third in a sacrifice, and scored on the Parker single. Here's the stretch by Rogers. One one pitch is up and in. Two and one. Willie Stargell batting for Tom Mickleday. A butler in our jackpot inning. Rogers delivers. Two one pitch. Stargell swings a shot into right center field. Dawson coming over and makes a running catch. Parker's all the way around second. He's got to hurry back. He retouches second base. Here's the throw to first double play. Parker was positive that the ball was going to get in the gap. But Dawson made an outstanding running catch in right center field. And Dawson turned and fired the ball back in. Just an unbelievable grab by Dawson. Catching up with a startle drive right at the edge of the warning track in right center. Parker was all the way around. Dawson, after he's caromed off the wall, fired it back in and doubled Parker off first base. So the Pirates in the third settled for a run. No home run during this giant eagle sweepstakes inning, but for Tom Mickley, our contestant, we'd like him to have a certificate for 10 Tasty Cake family packs and an assortment of daily juice products available at participating grocers. Our next giant eagle sweepstakes inning will be worth $1,200. After two and a half here in Montreal, Pirates won and the Expos nothing. After all these years, I still like working out. But what I really like is the beer that's waiting for me when it's over. And if you work out the way we do, there better be a lot of beer waiting. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. Light has one-third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling, and it tastes great. Take it from a guy who works out a lot. Could really use one right now. There you go, Bruce. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. The giant has remained silent long enough. We're Pure Litter Courier. We have 84 planes that can deliver your small package overnight for as little as $13. We have 3,500 vans that can get a small package up to 400 miles overnight for even less. Last year, we delivered over 28 million overnight packages, more than our two largest competitors combined. We thought you ought to know. Pure Litter Courier, the giant of the overnight package delivery business. All right, let's take a look. Uh, the uh, Pirates had their rally cut short. Dawson made the running grab in right center field. Boy, Lennon, he just he just outran the ball. It looked like it was a sure double, but he, he turned on the gas, was able to catch it. Parker had completely rounded second, had to retrace his steps, made sure he touched the bag, but was unable to beat the throw to first for the game, the inning-ending double play. Boy, Parker was certain the ball was going to drop in, and Dawson just tracked it down in right center. So we go now to the bottom of the third. By the way, they have announced that the game is being played under protest by the Pirates manager, Chuck Tanner. one nothing Pirates lead. The protest coming on a play that right now does indeed have an effect on the ball game. Warren Cromarty leads off the bottom of the third. Bucks leading one nothing, and the pitch to Cromarty in for a strike. Expo left fielder flied to left in the first inning. Up high, and it's one and one. Ground ball right side. Second baseman Garner flips on to Stargell. Cromarty is out one away in the third. Well, it's a big series. Pirates and Expos battling head to head. And before the game, we talked with Expo second baseman Dave Cash. Asked him if playing against his ex teammates, particularly in this series, gives him an extra lift. Not really, Nelly, but the importance of the game uh, gives me all the lift I think I need. And uh, right now, these two games are vitally important, I feel. Dave Cash, who at the trading deadline asked to be traded by the Expos, but he has stayed around and playing a big part. Montreal Drive in 79. One away. Cash had a base hit in the first. Swung on. Bouncer to Madlock at third. Fires across to Stargell. Two away. You know, just looking at the rule book here on that play in which Stargell was called for interference, there is a section of the book that says, if a batter strikes at a ball and misses and swings so hard he carries the bat all the way around and in the umpire's judgment unintentionally hits the catcher or the ball in back of him on the backswing before the catcher has securely held the ball, 
shall be called a strike only, not interference. Ball will be dead, however, and no runner shall advance on the play. So apparently, a little bit of there. Kind of difficult trying to browse through the book, but Tanner has protested the game. Two away. Here's Andre Dawson. Dawson struck out on the first. One nothing Pirates lead Dawson swings on the first pitch fly ball center field Omar Moreno going back on it. He's there and has it and the Expos are retired in order in the third. So Don Robinson Where takes care of Montreal in easy fashion in the third and after three innings of play it's our Pittsburgh Pirates one and the Montreal Expos nothing. Every innings are sponsored in part by light beer from Miller everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And in part by Golf Oil Corporation and your local golf dealer. Well, it's a one nothing ball game. One of the plays in that uh, third inning, the call on Stargell. And I think the, the part of the book that I just grabbed there might indeed hold up in what uh, happened there. Unintentional interference, ball is dead, runners may not advance. That's right. As, as soon as the interference is called, which it was, it's a strike on the hitter. And then uh, the ball is dead, so there's no further play, and Stargell was unable to advance to second base on the steal. Well, Chuck has protested the game. Pirates leading one to nothing. As Chuck looks on, uh, Chuck Tanner standing, and we can see him down in that dugout. Familiar pose of his, and John Milner leads off the fourth. It's in for a strike. Milner had a base hit in the second. One run, four hits for the Pirates. No runs, two hits for the Expos. One strike pitch. Strike two. Back in the third, the double play that uh, was recorded on Stargell's fly ball to right center pitch outside one and two. The out at first base went eight to three as Dawson fired it into Perez. Doubling up Dave Parker at first base. 1-2 pitch, check swing, foul ball, third base side. And later in the game, we might look back and say that might have been the key point of this ball game. Well, I think the situation, too, with the runner having to go back to first base and then add to that, that situation. I think had Dave Parker been at second base, Dave wouldn't have had to gamble as much. No, Dave would have been halfway, and halfway. had the ball been dropped, he would, have, he would have scored. Had not, he would have retaced his steps back to second. Inside, 2-2. Two and two. Oh, what a series here. Pirates and Expos. And after we play them again tomorrow night here in Montreal, we'll go head-to-head -head with the Expos. Four games next week back in Pittsburgh. Milner swings a fly ball to left field. Warren Cromarty drifting over near the line, and Cromarty has it. Milner's out one away in the fourth. Pirates leading one to nothing against Steve Rogers. Again, we want to remind you now, if you have a pirate pocket schedule it may look like next Monday's an off day but it's not we play two very big ball games against this Montreal Expo Club a twilight doubleheader that will start at 605 then single games against the Expos on Tuesday the 25th and Wednesday the 26th mm -hmm. Mr. Madlock is up high ball one and it may look on your schedule as if the 27th of September is an off day it may be but an excellent chance that we'll be playing at home on the 27th against the Cardinals or maybe against Montreal. Or maybe, who knows, pitches fouled off one and one. All depends on the weather. Yeah, the only way that we would not play at home on that Thursday, the 27th, would be if the Cardinals had a game rained out against the Phillies. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Swung on, bouncer outside a third. One ball, two strikes. One away, top of the fourth. Pirates leading one to nothing. RBI single by Parker. Drove Moreno home. Swing and a miss. And Matlock strikes out. Pretty dandy pitch from Steve Rogers. His first strike out of the game, two away in the fourth. What was that pitch? This is that big off-speed curveball that he's been using since the very beginning. Worked Matlock very well, throwing his fastballs and making him aware of it. And then coming in with that off-speed breaking ball, not only had great deception, but also great location. Two down in the fourth. Pirates in front, one to nothing. Ed Ott steps in. He popped up to the shortstop, Scott, in the second. 
Here's the pitch to Ott, swung on and fouled away, strike one. Outfield playing Ott around as a pull hitter to right. One strike pitch, fastball away, one and one. Gary Carter's assessment of of Rogers is that sometimes when he gets in trouble he starts thinking too much and forgets just to go out there and throw the ball with an idea of location. So that's when he usually gets in trouble and outthinks himself. Ott swings and misses one and two. I often felt I don't know as a as a viewer watching George Medich pitch for the Pirates that at times George had a tendency to, to think a little too much on the mound not just go out there and go with his instincts. Medich probably tried to dissect each pitch <laughs> as he was throwing. Inside two and two. Duffy Dyer used to say that when George was on the mound, they didn't go to an indicator. They used to come up and use square roots of numbers. You know, it was something like he'd drop three or four fingers and then take the square root of that, and that would be the pitch. Duffy didn't didn't catch on too quickly. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside. Corner for a call third strike. Second strikeout for Rodgers. They come back to back in the fourth. The Pirates are retired in order. So this big two-game series, the first game tonight, after three and a half innings of play, it's the Pittsburgh Pirates one and the Montreal Expos nothing. A good quarterback does his homework on and off the field. That's probably why the three of us are all drinking light beer from Miller. See, light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, it tastes great. And you know it's important to have a command of facts like that. It's middle discipline, really. You're darn right. Because if you know every position, every option, every formation, you'll never get your signals crossed. Hey, that's my beer, Terry. No, this is no way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Days, get a $400 check from Chrysler and a $400 check from South Hills Chrysler Plymouth on most remaining 79s in stock. Well, after tonight, games remaining for Montreal, 17, including 13 on the road. After tonight, Pirates have 15 left, over half, eight of them at home. Well, the advantage, I think, is, is with the Pirates at this point because we do have eight of those games at home, finishing the last week at home, and especially against Montreal, we have a chance to get all of that outside support from our home fans. Montreal, not knowing that they don't play that well on the road, I think psychologically that might have to work on them. And they, they have to go out and win those ball games. Uh, we played a couple more, even though we've lost one more, they still have to go out and win. Yeah, the Expos have to be uh, confronted with what the, the Pirate fans did with the Phillies last year in the final weekend of the season. Tony Perez leads off the bottom of the fourth. First pitch to him down low, ball one. Anybody who saw that series last weekend of uh, the 78 season against the Phillies, boy, the crowd just just pumped up that entire Pirate ball club. 1-0 pitch outside 2-0. And, oh. and of course, the one-run victories and the Friday night wins over the Philadelphia Phillies set the stage for the Saturday game. Here's the 2-0 -oh pitch. That's in for a strike two and one. Tony Perez facing Don Robinson last half of the fourth Pirates leading one to nothing fastball up and in three and one haven't seen too many three and one counts in the ball game. both pitchers have stayed primarily ahead of the hitters getting their both off speed and fastballs over the plate but Don Robinson just lost Tony Perez I think trying to throw the ball a little too hard Pitch downstairs for ball four. Second walk issued by Don Robinson. First one was an intentional walk of Scott in the second. Here's Gary Carter. Carter fouled out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. 1-0 one Pirates leading in the third. The Bucks got on the board with Parker's single to right that scored Omar Moreno. Omar had set up the run by stealing second moving to third on Foley sacrifice bunt. Robinson ready here's the pitch to Carter's swung on fouled back strike one. And of course Robinson making a little mistake there losing the leadoff batter of the inning uh, via the walk route didn't uh, have him put the ball in play so 
he might be asking for a little bit of trouble and uh, digging himself a little bad spot. Infield sets itself a double play depth. Madlock playing back at third, not looking for Carter to be bunting here. Stargell holding Perez on at first. One strike pitch, breaking ball down low. One nothing Pirates lead last half of the fourth. One one pitch runner going swing and a foul ball. That Perez running on the pitch. Carter reaching out and fouling it off to the right. Carter basically makes a lot of contact for a, a power hitter and with Perez being very slow of foot trying to put uh, him in motion so that they stay out of the double play. Perez back to first base. Well, you look at uh, this Montreal catching roster, and we mentioned Duffy Dyer and Gary Carter. Not only two fine receivers, but they might be two of the finer people in the game of baseball. Duffy Dyer, as many Pirate fans know, really a fine individual. Here's the one-two pitch to Carter. Swung on and popped on the right side. Foul territory. Starger over near the corner of the dugout, but it's back in the seats out of play. Willie Stargell, who dabbles in photography himself, looked like he was going to get a bird's eye view of the camera cage on the first base side. Maybe come away with a nice zoom lens. <laughs> Willie came into the clubhouse the other day with about 300 pictures. I've been taking a lot of photographs. Perez at first, nobody out. Bottom of the fourth. Pirates leading one to nothing. One two pitch. Down low. Mentioned this Montreal pitching staff. They've got a couple of injuries. One of their big men out of the bullpen, Elias Sosa. Bothered by a muscle strain in his pitching forearm, that could be an important point late in this ball game. Perez at first. Here's the stretch and the two-two pitch to Carter down low, and it's a full count. Don Robinson walked Tony Perez on five pitches. Now he's three and two on Carter. fourth stretch by Robinson Perez running 3-2 pitch swung on line shot at Garner he'll flip to Stargell for the double play so it goes four to three to erase Perez at first as Bill had a lot of time to just flip to Stargell to double off Tony Perez on the Carter line drive and again trying to stay out of the double play three and two and nobody out they send Perez it's just the uh, luck of the draw lady Luck has been smiling on the Expos in recent weeks, and here she frowns a little bit, evens the odds up with Phil Garner taking the line drive and doubling off Carter at first. Story today in the Montreal Papers said that apparently the big Dodger in the sky that helped the Dodgers a year ago has moved to Montreal. Big Expo in the sky now, that's what they're talking about. Pitch to Valentine, strike one. Nobody on two down, one nothing Pirates lead, last of the fourth. Pirates got the run on the third. We're now in the fourth. Off speed, Valentine. Fly ball, center field. Moreno coming in. Bucko center fielder has it. And the Expos are retired in the fourth. Montreal, no runs. A walk in the inning. Carter lined into a double play. Then Valentine flying to center. And that's all after four innings of play. It's our Pittsburgh Pirates one. And the Expos nothing. If you're looking for This is it, this half of the fifth inning. You can root the Buckos home. And our contestant is Kathy Kennedy of Pittsburgh. Kathy, if a home run is hit during this 
fifth inning by the Buckos, you'll win $1,200 worth of Giant Eagle groceries. Phil Garner, Don Robinson, and Omar Moreno are due up in the inning. A note passed on to us in our broadcast location. Diana McLean, who grew up in Pittsburgh, has seized her husband. I'm reading, uh, quoting from the letter. Has seized her husband, Robert Daniels, dragged him from Cleveland, of all places, to Montreal, where for the next two nights, they're spending their honeymoon in the stands here at Olympic Stadium, screaming, beat em bucks. All right, Diana. That's what they're screaming, huh? Beat em bucks. That's devotion. <laughs> One nothing. Pirates are leading fifth inning. Phil Garner, an intentional walk in the second. Down low, ball one. Just about when I'm thinking that I'm a household name, I get a letter up in the booth addressed to Lenny for Terry. Close. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Outside corner, one and one. <laughs> Steve Rogers facing the Pirates in the fifth. Bucks leading one to nothing. Got the run and a Parker single in the third that drove in Omar Moreno. Here's the 1-1 pitch. And down low. Garner facing Rogers. Robinson to follow, then Omar Moreno. And as we stated at the top of the broadcast, it's going to be pitching that dominates backed by good solid defense and we've certainly seen that in the first four innings. Yes we have. Garner fouls the pitch off and it's two and two. Fine defensive plays one by Parrish of the Expos in the first and then the running grab by Dawson on the Stargell drive in right center in the third. A couple of the big plays for the Expos behind Steve Rogers. Two two pitch. Check swing foul ball on the right side. Rodgers with a 2 2 pitch to Garner. Swung on, bounced outside of third. We'll be making our last appearance at Olympic Stadium during the regular season tomorrow, but there's a chance that we could come back here if uh, the Bucks and the Expos finish the regular season in a dead heat. The Pirates would play the Expos on Monday, October the 1st, here in Montreal. They've already held the coin toss and determined that Montreal would get the home site advantage. Here's the 2 2 pitch to Garner. Swung on. Ground ball to third baseman Parrish. He plays the second half. Fires across to Perez. And Garner is out one away. So now Don Robinson will face Steve Rogers. And Don will be batting for Kathy Kennedy. $1,200 in our jackpot. One nothing Pirates lead top of the fifth. Pitch outside ball one. One run four hits for the Pirates no runs two hits for the Expos. One oh pitch is in for a strike. Steve Rogers with five shutouts this year. He's blanked the Phillies twice, the Cubs once, the Giants once, and he's shut out the Pirates once. Pitch is down low. Two balls and a strike on Don Robinson. Rogers shaking his head after that 2 1 pitch. After that 1 1 pitch that made it 2 and 1. It's low and away to Robinson, 3 and 1. He knows in his own mind he certainly didn't want to fall behind three and one on the opposing pitcher at bat. Now he's not happy at all. One out, nobody on, top of the fifth. Pitch to Robinson, swung out, a base hit into center field. He jumps on that 3 1 pitch. That's hit number five for the Bucks. Don Robinson is on with one away here in the fifth inning. I'm sure Don's thinking of first base. He said, where was it when I needed it? Where was it in that that uh, second inning when uh, I had the bases loaded with two out? Mm -hmm. A little different situation. Rogers falling behind him here in the fifth. The base hit. Now Omar Moreno will be 
batting for Kathy Kennedy in our jackpot inning. Right-hander uh, James warming up in the bullpen for the Expos, Bob James. He's been throwing out there for some time, uh, Lanny. I just think he's loosening up on the side. I don't think it's anything serious. Omar swings on the first pitch and fouls it away. Strike one. Maybe I shouldn't say that. It's probably serious in his mind, but I don't think he's getting ready to go into the game. Omar had a base hit in the third, swiped second, moved to third in a Foley sacrifice, and scored in a Parker single. One nothing. Bucks are leading. Robinson at first, Perez playing just behind the runner, one away. Pitchers outside, one and one. Steve Rogers has the sign. And the 1-1 one -one pitch. Popped out behind second. Cash going out into center field. Cash will make the play two away. There's a lazy pop into center field. Two away. Pirates leading 1-0 against Steve Rogers. And that's the second time tonight that on an off-speed pitch, Omar has had a check swing and been cheated at the plate. Once in the first inning and now again here in the fifth. Foley batting for Kathy Kennedy. Jackpot inning, $1,200 on the line. Foley's 0 for 1, a fly ball and a sacrifice. Pitch down low to Foley, ball one. Robinson, one out single. He's now at first with two away. 1 0 pitch. Swung on, a shot into left center field, base hit. Dawson will cut the ball off in the gap. Robinson will stop at second. So a couple of base hits here in the fifth inning. Robinson and Foley are on. Two outs, and Dave Parker will be the batter in our jackpot inning. Got a moment here. We want to give our network radio stations a chance to pause for station identification on the Pirates Baseball Network. Parker now batting for Kathy Kennedy in our jackpot inning. Dave one for two had the RBI single to right in the third. A packed house at Olympic Stadium. Pirates and Expos. Start of the day in a virtual tie for first place in the National League Eastern Division. Here's the pitch to Parker inside ball one. The ingredient for a successful ball club. Timely hitting, good pitching, solid defense. Bucks looking to put it together tonight against the Expos. Running mates, Robinson at second, Foley at first. Two down, top of the fifth. Rogers 1-0 pitch. Just outside, 2-0. Davey Parker in this situation needs to be selective. He knows that he, that Rogers is behind him, two balls and no strikes, so he can afford to look for a certain pitch in a certain spot, and if he gets it, let her go, and if he doesn't, lay off of it. Rogers ready, the 2-0 pitch. Parker swings a bouncer outside of first. Pitch looked inside a little bit, two and one. And the confidence of Rogers that he has in that off-speed pitch. He was able to throw that slider right in on Davey Parker's fist, even though he was behind him, 2-0. 1-0 oh. Pirates are leading in the fifth inning. Bucks have two on, two away. Here's the 2-1 pitch, swung on, a bouncer outside of first. Oh, the count, 2-2. Two and two. Here in the fifth inning, Robinson with a one-out single. He's now at second base after Foley's base hit. So they're aboard with two down and Parker batting.
Rogers checks the runners. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Off-speed bouncer right side. It's through. Base hit. Robinson rounding third. Valentine up with it. Here's the throw to the plate. It is not in time. Robinson scores. Pirates lead 2 nothing. Parker's heading for second, and he'll make it standing up. Pirates leading 2 nothing. Don Robinson scoring from second base on the base hit by Dave Parker. So Parker has both of our RBIs. Davey Parker being able to hit that off-speed pitch that was up and over the plate just a little bit and drives it right between Perez and Cash. Valentine, that we all know has that gun in right field, charged the ball very well and came up with an accurate throw, but a hustling Don Robinson was able to slide in just in front of the tag, and Parker alertly noticing the fact that Carter was on the ground, took second base. So we still have a situation where we can explode in this game and go ahead by two more runs. Boy, it almost looked like the ball had beaten the runner at the plate, but Robinson somehow found a, a corner of the plate and got in before the tag. Stargell's going to be walked intentionally. On the play, Foley went to third, and Parker took second on the throw. Good heads-up base running by Dave Parker. So Stargell will be put on. Boy, it really did look like the throw had beaten Don Robinson. Well, we're going to see the good hop way out in front of the plate, and Don Robinson just starting his slide. Right on top of the scene, and uh, so Robinson gets in. Parker's RBI single makes it 2-0 Pirates. Stargell does indeed draw the intentional walk, so the bases are loaded. By the way, again, we realize that... Uh, a lot of our pirate fans are listening along our radio network. If from time to time you, we use the, the term as you see or whatever, it's uh, it's kind of hard not to do from time to time. But as we as we deep as we go in, make sure that your vertical hold on your radio is set. We're wrapped up in a two nothing ball game with the Expos. Milner swings a ground ball to the right side. Second baseman Cash flips to Perez. So no home run during this giant eagle sweepstakes inning. But for our contestant Kathy Kennedy. A certificate for 10 Tasty Cake Family Packs and an assortment of Daily Juice products available at your participating grocers. Our next Giant Eagle Sweepstakes inning will be worth $1,300. So in the fifth, Don Robinson scores on the Parker single. One run, three hits for the Bucks. After four and a half innings of play, it's our Pirates 2 and the Montreal Expos nothing. And now here's a tasty break from Tasty Cake. Gary Carter, a solid defensive catcher, but on that play, on that throw from Valentine, it really did look like uh, Carter had gotten the ball way ahead of uh, Don Robinson. And for some reason, Carter Nelly didn't put the glove down right away. Well, he certainly did. He didn't. He kept the glove in toward his body. And as Robinson was sliding, we said earlier, he got that stiff leg out in front and tagged the front part of the plate. And as Carter came out, he tagged him a little high on the leg, and Harvey was right on top of the play. When Carter had the ball, Don Robinson had not even put a foot yet in the dirt portion of the uh, home plate area. Which demonstrates his lightning speed. Uh-huh. Well, 2-0, nothing. Buckos lead. We go to the bottom of the fifth, and Don Robinson will face Larry Parrish in the last of the fifth. Parrish doubled his first time up. First pitch to him in the dirt, skips back to the screen, ball one. Elsewhere in baseball tonight, Toronto beat Boston 5-4 in the first of two. Jesse Jefferson, the winner for the Blue Jays. Dick Drago, the loser. Second game, Boston and Toronto tied 2-2. Freddie Lynn hit his 38th home run of the year in the first inning. Final score in the first of two. The Indians beat the Yankees 5-1. Rick Waits, the winner, and Jim Beatty, the loser. Second game, Yankees have failed in the top of the first against Cleveland. Catfish Hunter against Dan Spilner. Baltimore, Detroit, no score after four. Scott McGregor against Milt Wilcox. Minnesota did not score in the first against Chicago. Kuzman against Wortham. Pitch to Parrish, swing and a miss. One and one. California, Kansas City, big series there. Angels and Royals are scoreless after one. Chris Knapp against Dennis Leonard. Kansas City, three games back of California in the American League West. Swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes on Parrish. Leading off the bottom of the fifth. Pirates leading 2-0. Take a look at the National League board in a moment. Don Robinson. 1-2 pitch. 
Fly ball left center field. Omar Moreno going into the gap. The ball's going to be off the wall. And it pops high in the air. Parrish into second base. His second hit of the game. Both hits doubles. Omar Moreno sprinting over in left center, unable to catch up with it. And the ball popped high in the air off the off the fence. Anytime so far tonight that we've been ahead of Parrish in the count, one and two, zero oh and two. He has been sitting on that breaking ball, and that wasn't really a bad pitch, but he was sitting right on that breaking ball and hit the the long fly ball, the short hop the wall in left center. He pulls in with that leadoff double. That is only the third hit off Don Robinson. Batter now Rodney Scott. Stargell in to talk with Don Robinson. Ed Ott goes out to the mound. While they confer, let's run down that National League board. Phillies and Cardinals 1-1 in the second. Steve Carlton against Bob Forsh. Later games, Atlanta's at Los Angeles. Houston at San Diego. Cincinnati at San Francisco. The Reds have opened a two-and-a-half game lead over Houston in the National League West. In the Eastern Division, the Pirates and Expos in a virtual tie. Tonight, Pirates leading 2-0. Last half of the fifth. Robinson ready. Checks Parrish at second. Pitch to Scott is in for a strike. Pirate bullpen going to go to work. Enrique Romo, who injured the base of his right index finger the other day, is well enough to pitch tonight, and he'll start warming up. Pitches inside the Scott, and it's one and one. That leadoff double by Parrish coming in the number seven spot. Down with a good chance to get out of it here if he can take care of Scott and Rogers. First, they might go to their bench. There's a line shot. Base hit. Moreno bobbles the ball. Parrish is coming. Here's the throw to the plate. Run scores. It's now two to one. Throw to second, but Rodney Scott gets back. So it is a two to one ball game. A looping liner just up over the glove of Tim Foley. Ball was inside on Scott. He was able to get his hands through and inside out the ball. Omar having a lot of trouble coming up with the ball, and Parrish did not check in the third but kept going, watching his coach, and they waved him on. He scored easily, and on the throw, the tying run goes into second base in the form of Rodney Scott. See how they score it because uh, Parrish appeared to be holding up. An error is charged on Moreno. And uh, no RBI for Scott. Robinson turns and throws to second base, but Scott got back. So it is a single for Scott. An error charged on Omar Moreno. Paris scores. Steve Rogers, the batter. The infield, pirate infield, looking for the bunt. Rogers shows it, bunts it. Stargell has it, gonna go to third, throws the Madlock, and they tag Rodney Scott. One away, got the lead man. Good anticipation by Stargell. Handled the butt by Rogers, and fired over to the Madlock at third. Good play. Rogers bunts the ball a little too firm, and with a charging Willie Stargell, the first baseman, coming in, the ball was a perfect one hop right to him, comes in and makes a good throw to Matlock and nails a sliding Rodney Scott quite easily. You know, I think the ball stayed in the air long enough, too, that it uh, froze Rodney Scott for a bit off second base. So Rodgers is on at first. One away. Rodgers able to stay in the game in a butt situation. Pirates leading 2-1 to one in the last of the fifth, and what a dandy ball game we got tonight. These two clubs... Going to battle right down to the wire in this Eastern Division race. And they are wrapped up in a one-run affair here tonight in the bottom of the fifth. Warren Cromarty, the batter, he's 0 for 2, is flied out and grounded out. Rogers at first, pitch swung on and fouled off, strike one. And the Expos battling right back. This shows the character of this Expo club. They aren't going to sit down and die for anyone. It's got to be one of the reasons they've been able to stay in this race so long with a club that is relatively young. They will not die. Keep coming at you. Bro Marty facing John Robinson. Rogers at first one away. Here's the one strike pitch and it's outside. Pirates got a run on the third. 
A run in the fifth. Dave Parker has driven in both pirate runs. Giving Dave 88 RBIs on the year. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball up and out, 2-1. and one. And Ott looked behind uh, back to the screen for a second. Might have been trying to decoy Steve Rogers a bit. Robinson getting off the dirt of the mound to rub up a new ball went to his mouth but if you're off the mound it doesn't count. Got a new baseball and one he likes. Stargell playing off the bag right in front of Rogers on the right side. Two balls and a strike on Cromarty. One away. Last half of the fifth. Pirates leading two to one. Pitch swung on a fly ball into center. Omar Moreno sprinting in on the ball is going to drop in base hit. Rogers will stop at second. Cromarty on at first. Ball dropping quickly. Expos have two on. Been a rough inning for Omar. I think he felt that he could have tracked Parrish's ball in left center to start the inning. Then he bobbled the Rodney Scott base hit into left center. He first and like second. Excuse me. Excuse me. Looks like Lady Luck has moved back into their camp. That was a, a real fist turn with Omar playing a little deeper wasn't it able to come in and make the play. Dave Cash the batter one for two. Cash had a base hit in the first inning new extended his hitting streak to 12 games two on for the Expos one out fifth inning Pirates leading two to one on the pitch to Cash is a strike. We've heard a lot of uh, stories about how things have really gone Montreal's way the last couple of weeks funny bounces that have Help the Expos win ball games. Pitches a fly ball down the right field line. Parker drifting over in the corner. Dave will make the grab right outside the line. Rogers moving over to third of the play. Dave Cash flying out to Dave Parker down in the right field corner. And on the foul out, Rogers moving over to third. Good play by Dave Parker. Le Voltigeur de Saint, the center fielder. Montreal mascot here. They have one. I guess most of the clubs in the big leagues have mascots now. A Yupi, that's what they call it. A Montreal Yupi. Difficult finding a name for him. They had to find a name that was identifiable in both English and French. So it was whoopee, whoopee, <laughs> yuppie, yuppie. Runners at first and third, two outs. John Robinson trying to close down Montreal. Pirates leading 2 1 last of the fifth. Dawson the hitter, he's 0 for 2. Robinson's pitch swung out a shot through. Madlock at third. He'll flip to Garner at second for the force out on Cromarty. Play going 5 to 4 at second base. And the Montreal Expos settle for one run. In the fifth inning, on three hits, one pirate error, Parrish scored the run, and after five innings of play, it's our Buccos two and Montreal one. The battle with the Expos is to decide the top spot of the National League East, and uh, a reminder for you pirate fans, the Bucks are accepting orders for games three, four, and five of the National League Championship playoffs. The playoffs will take place on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, October 5th, 6th, and 7th, Tickets are priced at $8 for reserve seats and $4 for general admission seats. And you can buy your tickets in person at Three Rivers Stadium at the Pirate Ticket Office located on the upper level of Gate A or at any one of the over 80 G.C. Murphy locations in the Tri-State. Keep in mind that tickets for any unplayed playoff games may be refunded at face value at any branch of Mellon Bank. Pirates against the best in the West for the right to go to the World Series you can call 323-1150 if you'd like further information on the playoff tickets. All right, we're going to go to the sixth inning. Steve Rogers facing the Bucks. Pirates leading 2-1. to one. Bill Madlock will lead off the sixth. Bill is 0-1. for one. Sacrifice bunt in the second. Struck out in the fourth. Rogers delivers, and Madlock takes inside ball one. Now, yeah, pretty much the way we expected it. These two clubs... Tied on the top spot in the Eastern Division and wrapped up in a 1-1 ball game here at Olympic Stadium. Going back to the top of our broadcast, Nelly, you felt this was a big one for the Pirates. Well, it certainly is. It's a two-game 
two game win or loss for us we can either go even on the loss side or we can fall two games behind on that loss side and that's very important for us now we'd like to get even on that side because then we've got those games won 2-0 pitch fly ball into right center field Andre Dustin the expo center fielder is there and has it one away Two one Pirates are leading Bucks are batting in the sixth inning. That'll bring up catcher Ed Ott. He's over two. Give you some idea what's ahead for the Pirates. We go to Philadelphia for a doubleheader Wednesday. After we play the Expos tomorrow night then we'll be in Philadelphia for a late Thursday afternoon game with the Phillies into Chicago for a weekend set against the Cubs. Pitch to Ed Ott is outside ball one. Montreal plays back-to-back -back double headers with the New York Mets at Shea Wednesday and Thursday of this week here's the 1-0 pitch Ott swings and pops it down the left side Parrish and Scott converging in foul territory but it's going to drop and it'll be strike one Montreal Expos this weekend will be in Philadelphia and Montreal comes into Pittsburgh. Four game series with the Pirates. Next Monday night, it starts with a twilight doubleheader at the stadium. 6.05 will be the starting time for game one against Montreal. You know, we've said they've got all these doubleheaders coming up. Wait till they see those doubleheaders. I can remember the Expo saying, wait till that West Coast trip. That's going to kill the Pirates. <laughs> it never happened, and these doubleheaders might not be the thing that uh, breaks Montreal's back. Here's the 1 1 pitch to Edot. Outside, 2 and 1. take them one day at a time as Williams and Tanner both said you just have to win 2-1 pitch swung out and a base hit into left field Crow Marty plays the ball on one hop flips it in and odd with a one out single to left Pirates leading two to one that's hit number eight for the Bucks and the batter will be second baseman Phil Garner he intentionally walked in the second bounce to third in the fifth Here's the stretch by Rogers. Pitch to Garner is a strike in the outside corner. Garner swings a fly ball into center field. Dawson drifting over towards right center has it. And Garner's out two away. Ed Ott will remain at first base. Bring up pitcher Don Robinson. Robinson one for two. He had a base hit in the fifth. And scored our second run, the run that right now has us in front. And you can understand in that situation why Steve Rogers was shaking his head at following three behind on the opposing pitcher. Knew he was in trouble and had to throw a strike, and Robinson took advantage of it. Pitch to Don Robinson, a strike on the inside corner, call strike. Out at first with two away. Here's the stretch of the one strike pitch. Swing and a miss. It's 0 2. This is just game one of this two game series. We'll have game two tomorrow night. We'll be with you from Olympic Stadium. Two strike pitch. Strike three call. Third strikeout for Steve Rogers. The Pirates in the sixth inning. No runs on one hit. They hit by Ed Ott. So after five and a half innings of play, the Pirates lead the Montreal Expos and Steve Rogers by a score of two to one. On Sunday, September 30th, the Pirates will take on the Cubs in the Pirates' 33rd annual Prize Day game. So over a thousand fans will win over $45,000 worth of merchandise, including a $15,000 customized Pirate band. Plus, all fans attending that game will go away a winner with a Pirate key tag courtesy of Hamel Quinlan Realtor. And it all comes down to the final day of the regular season, prize day, September the 30th, against Dave Kingman and the Cubs. Buy your tickets now or register without obligation at any Pirate ticket outlet. Could come down to that final day. Dave Kingman might be battling Mike Schmidt for a home run crown. 
All right, we go down to the bottom of the sixth. Tony Perez, Gary Carter, and Ellis Valentine are due up for Montreal. Pirates and Don Robinson leading two to one. Perez 0 for 1. It's in for a strike. Bruce Keeson gets Bill Lee tomorrow in the second game of the series. One strike pitch. He is up high, one and one. Pitch to Perez. Ball two. Just checking. Uh, Bruce Keeson is 13 and eight lifetime against Montreal. Tonight it's Don Robinson against the Expos. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Foul back in the net. 2-2. Two two. Robinson ready. The pitch to Perez. Here's ball three. a few more 3-2, three, 3-1 three, pitches in the last couple of innings. And in the fourth, he walked Tony Perez to start off that inning. 3-2 pitch. This time, he punches him out. Pitch up and in. Perez swings and misses, and that is strikeout number two for Don Robinson. Good, good pitch. Certainly was. That was just good fastball right up and over the plate. Perez seemed like he was right on it, but the movement took care of itself and was able to blow it right on by. You mean that was just a good old Canova West Virginia fastball right there yes sir from a nice strong young athlete yeah down home country fastball all right one away here's Gary Carter Carter's 0 for 2 has popped up and lined into a double play one out nobody on last half of the sixth inning Pirates leading two to one it's to Carter breaking pitch away Carter had a notion but he laid off ball one Pirates took the lead in the third Single by Parker drove Moreno in. Pirates made it 2-0 in the fifth when Parker's single drove Don Robinson home. And then the Expos got a run in the fifth inning. 1-0 pitch. Just missed. Inside. 2-0. Now 3-2 and two fastball also demonstrates the fact that Don Robinson is still throwing the ball very well here in the latter part of the ball game. Robinson with a 2-0 pitch to Carter. Swung on a drive into left center field. Moreno draws a beat on it in left center. Shy of the warning track and has it. Two away. You know, Nelly, I still maintain, of course, hard to tell. We're, we're really high up here in Montreal, but I've always felt the ball carry so well here in Montreal down the lines. And I think because of the, the gaps here at this stadium, it does not seem to carry as well from power alley to power alley. Well, basically, the shortest part of the ballpark is down the line, a little shorter than most, being 325, and it goes out to 375, quite a ways over in right and left center, but basically, you need to pull the ball in this park to get the uh, easy home run. All right, here's Ellis Valentine. He's 0 for 2, has flied to Moreno twice. 2-1 Pirates lead, sixth inning. And the pitch to Valentine is up high, ball one. As we notice with both pitchers being good fastball pitchers, they've been able to keep the, the ball in the center part of the diamond so neither side has been able to pull the opposing pitcher pitch inside the Valentine it's 2 and 0 2 0 pitch fly ball right field side Parker coming over near the line and Dave has it Expos go without a struggle in the sixth Montreal battle for the top spot of the National League East. After six innings of play, it's our Pittsburgh Pirates 2 and the Montreal Expos 1. The next three innings are sponsored in part by Mellon Bank. You get a good feeling for saving at Mellon Bank. And in part by Quaker State, America's best-selling motor oil. Quaker State helps cars last. Well, we're getting ready for the uh, seventh inning of this ball game, the Pirates leading two to one, and it really is everything we thought it would be—a two-one ball game. The crowd wrapped up in the excitement of this game between the Pirates and the Expos. Certainly are. We're seeing the great pitching. We're seeing outstanding defensive plays, and 
and it's going to boil right down to the last three innings of the first game here in Montreal. I wish you had told me we we're going to go on camera. I would have put my coat on. Thanks a lot, Nelly. My pleasure, Lanny. <laughs> All right, let's go to the seventh inning now in the action from Olympic Stadium. Omar will lead off the seventh. Nice guys. Foul back, strike one. Omar one for three in the ball game. He had a base hit and scored our opening run in the third. The only reason I had a coat on is I'm getting a little chilly up here. <laughs> oh, yeah? Wait, let me get you my pirate ski cap that I brought along. Where'd it go? There it is. Well, I tell you, when I left Pittsburgh yesterday, so I'm taking my pirate ski cap with me. Because with Montreal and Philadelphia and Chicago in this trip, you just never know what's going to happen at Wrigley Field weather-wise. All right, one and one on Omar. Here's the pitch. Swung on. A shot inside the first base bag. It's going to roll down into foul territory. Moreno rounding first. Going to second. Valentine chasing it down in the corner. And Omar will make the turn at second base and hold on. Right over the bag on the first base side. Two base hit for Omar Moreno. Omar waits on a good off-speed pitch, pulls it just inside the bag. And I'll tell you, Omar knows that Valentine in right field has got a gun, and you might think that Omar might be trying for three as the ball stays down in the corner, but respecting that arm, he pulls up at second base with nobody out. And I think, too, he realizes he's got a good guy with Foley hitting behind him. He can move him over to third and set the stage for Parker. Foley stepping in one for two. Tim help us set up the first run of the ball game with a sacrifice bunt on the third. Two to one, Pirates are leading. Top of the seventh inning. Foley bunting, right side of the mound. Perez, first baseman, flips to Cash. And on the sacrifice, Moreno moves to the front door. He's over at third, play goes 3-4 on the sacrifice. Tonight's attendance, 54,609 at Olympic Stadium. And again, Tim Foley asking, being asked to uh, play the fundamental game of baseball, bunt the man over, and he's done that uh, successfully twice in the game. Well, the Expos are going to have to think about their bullpen with Rogers due up third in the bottom of this inning. The right-hander, Stan Bonson. The left-hander, Woody Freiman. And as we suspected, Ilya Sosa, their number one short reliever from the right side, is not throwing, and Stan Bonson is taking his place. Parker, two for three. RBI single in the third, RBI single in the fifth. Their infield is up, runner at third, one out. Pitch swung on a bouncer. Perez has it. First baseman coming off the line. He'll run back to the bag, and Parker is out two away. Well, a good play by Tony Perez. Both he and Dave Cash converged on the high bouncer to the right side, and Perez took care of it. Omar having to stay at third. Parker again trying that same slot where he's been successful twice tonight. Trying to go between first and second, but Perez makes a fine play, leaping and cutting the ball off and beating Parker to first base, and Omar, just not wanting to commit himself at third base, remained there. So two away, Stargell the batter, Willie one for two. He singled in the second inning. 2-1, Pirates lead, Rogers delivers, and Stargell swings and misses on an off-speed pitch. Oh, what a dandy ball game. Pirates, Expos, Montreal start of the day, percentage points in front. Stargell swings and fouls it back, it's 0-2. When Rogers knows that he got away with a pitch right there. That ball was right in Willie's wheelhouse, and Willie, Willie just fouled that pitch off. He would like to have that ball back. Longest home run at Olympic Stadium came off the bat of Willie Stargell. Rogers ready from the stretch. The 0-2 pitch swung on. A bouncer outside of first. Count remains no balls and two strikes. Here in the seventh, leadoff double by Moreno. Foley sacrificed him to third, and Parker bounced out to Perez. Pirates have the best road record in the National League. Expos have been an outstanding home ball club, so interesting statistic there, meeting head on in the series. 0-2 pitches outside. Rodgers thought maybe he'd get the call, but didn't. One and two on Stargell. Moreno at third, two outs. 
Tried to sneak a breaking ball over the outside corner. Rogers from the stretch, one two pitch. Swing and a miss, struck him out. That is the fourth strikeout for Steve Rogers. Pirates in the seventh, no runs on one hit. And after six and a half innings of play from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, it's our Pittsburgh Pirates two and the Montreal Expos one. Miles, I don't know if you know this or not. Uh, I know you know for a fact that uh, this is the fourth year that Milo and I work together, but Milo missing the game yesterday and uh, not being with us tonight. Yesterday was the first game he had missed since 1966, and in his 27 or 28 years as a major league broadcaster, our sidekick Milo Hamilton missed only three games in his career. So it's got to be frustrating for That's him sitting back there That's watching fair. us, but hopefully we're we're filling in in admirable form, and we're wrapped up in a 2-1 ball game with the Expos, and we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Parrish, pair of doubles so far. Parrish doubled in the second and doubled and scored a run in the fifth. Here's the pitch. Down low ball one. Again, we'll remind you, I think it's important to point out to all of our listeners that tonight's game being simulcast by KDK Television and our Pirate Radio Network. Parrish swings and misses one and one. Parrish, Scott, and then Rogers do up. So we'll see if Williams goes to his bench. Robinson's pitch off speed, popped in foul territory. Ott coming back to the screen. He's got room and has it. Bobbled it a moment, but held on. And Larry Parrish is out, popping up to Ed Ott. Pull the string on him, one away. Fine hustle by Ed Ott able to find the ball on the on the pop foul but he had really hustled to get back pick up the ball and then gauge how far that ball was going to come back was able to put the glove on it and then uh, gave us a little juggling act there for a minute but was able to put it away secure one away bottom of the seventh pirates leading two to one and rodney scott their switch inning shortstop will lead off or will uh, step in rather with one out of nobody on scott had a base hit in the fifth inning it was his base hit that led to the Parrish run that was the only Montreal, Montreal run so far. And with the Pirates getting into the latter part of the ball game, we have Grant Jackson and Enrique Romo warming in a bullpen. There's a strike to Rodney Scott. Showed bunt. It's 0-2. Chuck Tanner is not going to go very long with uh, Don Robinson from this point on. He's going to play it very close to the vest not let the game get out of hand so the early sign of trouble I'm sure that uh, Robinson would be lifted and with Rogers on deck we'll see what Williams do uh, does rather here's the 0 2 pitch breaking ball inside and in low one and two on Robinson working in the seventh inning against the Expos Swung on a tap route in front of the plate. Robinson off the hill has it. Fires the Sargent, not in time. Rodney Scott beats it out for an infield single. Base hit for Rodney Scott. And they're going to go to their bench. Just a little tapper right out in front of the right out in front of the mound. And with Don Robinson falling toward the first base side of the mound, he had to come back to get the ball. Makes a fine bet. play. Comes up. Throws the ball well, but the speed of Rodney Scott from that left side was enabled him to beat the play. Tommy Hutton is going to be the pinch hitter for Steve Rogers. It was Hutton who first coined the phrase the bus squad, referring to the Expos bench. Matter of fact, there's a little section down near the dugout that is called the bus squad warm-up section. The batting cage where they're able to try to stay loose and stay ready for the Expos. Tommy Hutton steps in with a 269 batting average. One home run, 13 runs batted in. Batting with Scott at first. Rodney Scott has 33 stolen bases. One away, bottom of the seventh. Pirates leading 2-1. to one. Throw to first. Scott is back.
Hutton batting for Steve Rogers. Stretched by Robinson. Here's the pitch to Hutton. And it's outside ball one. Woody Fryman right now loosening up in the Montreal bullpen down the right field line. Woody Fryman. Looks like he'll take over for Rogers after Steve Rogers worked the first seven innings. 2-1, Pirates lead. Robinson throw to first base. Scott back. Hutton, good fastball hitter. He likes to get be behind in the count if he can the pitch behind him and then look for that fastball and hit it he has power he can hit the long ball throw to first Scott is back safely just checking the last time Don Robinson went by the sixth inning in a ball game was against the Dodgers he pitched seven innings against Los Angeles that was almost exactly a month ago August the 18th Ball and no strikes on Tommy Hutt. Robinson with a throw to first base. Scott just gets back. Diving back to the bag, getting that right hand down. A diving Rodney Scott just sneaks back in ahead of the throw. And Willie Stargell has really improved on his tag there at first base. He's been able to really pop that glove down and if Scott had been a little slower getting back to the bag. He'd have had it. Runner at first, one out. Robinson ready. 1-0 pitch. Scott is running. Ball one. Throw to second base. It's in time. Rodney Scott is out. Foley takes the throw from Ed Ott. So the cut stealing goes 2-6. The pitch was a ball outside, making it ball two. Scott takes off. He thinks he has a real good jump, and he's watching as Ott comes out of the chute and makes a good throw, but I want you to see the great tag that Foley puts on him. The ball is up, but he brings that glove down very quickly and is able to nail, him, nail a sliding Rodney Scott right on the foot before he gets to the bag. Frank Foley, second base umpire, makes the call. Two away, seventh inning. And a strike to Hutton, two and one. Nobody on, two down. Robinson. Wines and deals. Hutton swings and fouls it off to the left. Don Robinson's 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strikes him out. So the Expos in the seventh inning. No runs on one hit. The base hit by Scott, but he was caught stealing. As Foley made the tag at second base. And now, after seven innings of play in this battle for first place in the National League Eastern Division, it's our Pittsburgh Pirates 2 and the Montreal Expos 1. He scores! That's action hockey as only the Pittsburgh Penguins can deliver. And these season ticket holders won't miss a minute of it. Ferguson and the Penguins have defeated the Buffalo Sabres. The entire Civic Arena will be thundering with excitement. Be part of the action, but hurry. Season tickets are going faster than the Penguins on ice. Eighth inning, time to root the Bucks home during this half of the eighth. And our contestant, Stanley Waldo of Pittsburgh, Home run hit by the Bucks in this eighth inning, and Mr. Waldo will receive our jackpot of $1,300 worth of Giant Eagle groceries. New pitcher for the Montreal Expos is the veteran left-hander Woody Fryman. His numbers, it's his 38th appearance of the year. All from the Montreal bullpen. Three wins, five losses, nine saves. ERA at 3.12. A very creditable pitching performance by the starter, by uh, starter Steve Rogers, and... Uh, just unfortunate that uh, he gave up that extra run, not able to stay in a ball game. But here you have the veteran uh, Woody Fryman trying to hold the Bucks. Unfortunate and see if for they them. Come. That's exactly right. And Milner shows bunt on the first pitch, offers at it, strike one. John Milner, one for three, had a base hit in the second. So Rogers in seven innings gave up two runs and nine hits. Bucks leading two to one, eighth inning. And the pitch to Milner is inside, one and one. Woody Fryman, second time around with the Expos. He was with Montreal. 75 76 came back to the Expos in June of last year from Chicago pitch goes the two and one on Milner eighth inning hope you're enjoying the broadcast as we bring it to you from Montreal wrapped up in this 
Big two game set with the Expos. Milner swings and taps it foul back. It's two and two. Nothing very fancy about Fryman. He throws a good pass ball and, and slider. He doesn't try and trick anybody. He just goes out and challenges them and tries to keep the ball down. Here's the 2-2 pitch. And it's outside full count. Fryman, 39 years of age. Kentucky boy. Here's the payoff pitch. Milner swings, ground ball right side. First baseman Perez has it, flips to Fryman covering. That veteran combination takes care of Milner one away. That'll bring up Bill Madlock, batting here in the eighth inning for Stanley Waldo in a jackpot of $1,300. Madlock is 0 for 2. 2-1, two Pirates lead. Parker, RBI single in the third. David with an RBI single in the fifth. That time gave us a 2-0 lead. Expos got their run on the bottom of the fifth. And the pitch to Matlock, ball one. one 0 -oh pitch. In for a strike. Catcher Ed Ott is on deck. 1-1 one -one pitch. Ground ball left side, deep in the hole. Scott has it. Long throw to first. It is not in time. Bill Matlock has the infield single. Rodney Scott made the stop deep in the hole, but throw not strong enough to get Bill Madlock. Bill trying to get on base so we can get that insurance run. Hits the ball way in the hole, but the fine range of Rodney Scott enables him to track the ball down. He has to stop on this turf to try and get off a good, strong throw, but the speed of Madlock beats the play. Madlock with uh, 27 stolen bases. He's aboard with one away. Pirates leading two to one. Ed Ott will step in, batting for Stanley Waldo. Ott with a 276 batting average. Stretched by Fryman. Pitch to Ed Ott. He is ball one. Certainly used some insurance runs right here, Lanny. Stretched by Fryman, the 1 0 pitch. No, throw to first base and Madlock back safely. Say so the way the Expos have been getting some lucky bounces late in their ball games. Yeah, you'd like to try to open it up a bit. Stretch by Fryman, 1-0 pitch. Ott swings, ground ball right side. Second baseman cash to Scott at second one. Fire to first. Double play. Goes 4-6-3 on the double play, erasing Matlock and Ott. So no home run during our Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning, but for our contestant, Stanley Waldo, a certificate for 10 Tasty Cake Family Packs and an assortment of daily juice products available at participating grocers. Our next Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning will be worth $1,400. Makes the change of placing Robinson in left field. Omar's in center, Parker in right. Pirate infield, Stargell at first. Garner at second. Foley at short, Madlock at third. Want to apologize. We understand that we've had uh, some technical difficulties. Lost uh, part of our audio description and a little bit of our video. We apologize for that. We get back to action in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bill Robinson is our new left fielder, replacing John Milner. Warren Cromarty leading off of the Expos. He's one for three. Two to one. Pirates are leading in the eighth inning. Pitch is fouled back, and it's 0-2. In these last two innings, we've got to go right through their front eight players. So Bill Don Robinson definitely has his work cut out for him. Don Robinson, 3-0 lifetime against the Montreal Expos. Pitch is a strike call from Marty. Caught looking. Don Robinson gets his third strikeout. One away in the eighth. This is an outstanding breaking ball that Robinson starts on the outside part of the plate and breaks it right over that outside corner. Cromarty gave up on that pitch just a little bit, and at the last minute, that ball broke right square on the corner. Nice pitch by Don Robinson. Got him with the bender in the outside corner. One away. 
Robinson and the Bucks leading two to one. Dave Cash the batter. Cash is one for three. Bottom of the eighth inning. Battle for first place in the Eastern Division. The pitch to Cash is a strike. Well, all the excitement, all the ingredients were here tonight, and we've not been disappointed. One strike pitch. Popped right side, second baseman Garner into shallow right center field, and he has it. Cash is out two away in the Montreal eighth inning. Don Robinson won his uh, first decision over Montreal May 19th of last year. That was here at Montreal's Olympic Stadium. Andre Dawson, the battery, steps in 0 for 3. Bottom of the eighth, Pirates two, Expos one. Dawson right-handed batter, Robinson's pitch. Down low, ball one. Robinson fastball up and in, one and one. And Don the Knight certainly backing up what he has said here in the last couple of days. He said, hey, I'm a good pitcher against that Montreal club. I'm the man for the job, and I'm going to go out and beat him. And he's certainly backing that statement up so far. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on, a fly ball into center. Moreno coming on, and he catches up with it. Omar makes the grab. Dawson is out, and the Expos are retired in the eighth inning. A call third strike, a pop in the shallow right center, and a Dawson fly to center field, and the Expos go down 1-2-3. So, after eight innings of play in this first game of the two-game set between the Expos and the Pirates, our Buccos lead Montreal 2-1. Well, they've caught the fever here in Montreal. Reminds us a lot of what the Bucco fans did to the Phillies the last weekend of last year. And we're calling on all Pirate fans to turn out in force as the Pirates host the Expos next week. This National League Eastern Division race continues to heat up. That's right. The battle begins Monday, September 24th, with a big 20-night doubleheader and is followed by single games on the 25th and 26th. The Bucks versus the Expos, a September 24th doubleheader, followed by single games on the 25th and 26th. So don't you miss it. This matchup between the Pirates and the Expos, bottom of the ninth inning, pitch to Perez, who's down low, ball one. Perez facing Don Robinson. Pirate bullpen working with right-hander Ketza Colby and left-hander Grant Jackson warming up down the left field side. Perez is 0 for 2 against Robinson. Swings and fouls it away, and it's 1 and 1. Robinson has forced the Expos to scatter their six hits. Pirates got a single run in the third, one in the fifth. Expo's got a run in the bottom of the fifth. Bucks leading two to one. Montreal up in the bottom of the ninth. One one pitch. Fly ball right center field. Parker going over and back. Dave is at the edge of the warning track and has it. Perez is out one away in the bottom of the ninth inning. Oh, that's a big one. I like getting that first out right there. Certainly is. Now one pitch, even though they get a base hit, one pitch can take us right out of the ball game and give us that victory. Don Robinson remaining strong all the way through. Still throwing the ball well as witnessed here when Perez cannot pull the ball and hits it to the deep part of the ballpark. It was spring training 78 when Don Robinson impressed everybody in the pirate camp with his determination, his poise, his competitive nature, and he was rookie pitcher of the year last year. Tonight, he is facing the Expos. Pirates leading 2-1. Pitch to Carter. Ground ball upside. Shortstop Foley has it. Fires to Stargell. Carter is out and two away in the ninth. Bucks one out away from grabbing this game from the Expos in Montreal's backyard. They started in a virtual tie. And Ellis Valentine will be the batter. He's 0 for 3. Robinson can smell that victory. He's, he's pacing around the mound. He knows that he has them in hand. He's done so well. Valentine stands between him and that big winner circle. Nobody on, two down, bottom of the ninth inning. Robinson winds and deals to Valentine and 10 for a call strike. Nobody on, two down, bottom of the ninth. Pirates leading two to one. Robinson, one strike pitch, breaking ball down low, and it's one and one. Now they appeal to the first base umpire, Andy Olson, and he rings him up. 
Valentine with that flip of the bat there. It's, uh, I think, a, an effort on his part to be kind of cute, but it, it might have cost him in that situation. Well, he tried to save it by letting the ball, the bat go straight up in the air, but the appeal to the first base umpire to, oh, no, you don't. I caught you. You went around. Robbie's got him in a hole 0 2. Here's the wind and the 0 2 pitch. Fouled back on the screen. Careful, Nobody Robbie. On. Two down. Definitely almost made a mistake right there. Had him 0 and 2 and threw a high breaking ball. Valentine fouled it off. He needs to make sure of each pitch now. He's got the hitter in the hole. Don't make a mistake in this situation. Put him away. Here's the 0 2 pitch. And it's up high. One ball and two strikes. Here's the one two pitch down low. Two and two. Nobody on. Two down. Boy, the numbers up on the board. Two two ball game. Two one ball game. Pitch swung out. A fly ball into center field. Omar Moreno is there. Pounds the glove. Omar has it. The Pirates have beaten the Montreal Expos, and there was no doubt about it. Donnie Robinson goes all the way to defeat the Montreal Expos. The final score, the Pirates 2 and the Montreal Expos 1. And Nelly, Don Robinson, given the ball, and Robinson has pulled it out for the Bucks. Well, he certainly has, and when you take a look, going clear back to the first part of the season arm problems have kept him out of there not able to have that sophomore season the way he wanted you can see right there the fantastic determination that he has had just a tremendous victory for him and that winds up pirate baseball for tonight be with us again tomorrow night at 7 30 from olympic stadium when the bucks meet the montreal expos pirate baseball has been brought to you in part by miller high life if you've got the time we've got the beer and in part by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, where that...